So uh, as I announced in the Black Forum, we will take the midterm exam on October 27th, right? Because we will take the, uh, this midterm exam uh, during the regular class time, but the, the I, I expect that the exams will take one and a half hour. Uh, so maybe the exam will uh, end at uh, 12, right? So it is, it is start at uh, 10.30, okay? And then, uh, and then I, I, I hope, uh, I expect it will end at 12, okay? And then uh, as I announced on, on the blackboard, so this is the closed book exam. So, so you cannot uh, refer any textbook. So you cannot use any electric devices uh, except the simple cal calculator. Okay. So as you know, the in chapter one, so we learned about the performance matrix, and then not to uh, compute the um, performance of a computer system, and you may require uh, calculators, okay? Uh, actually, we have uh, two or three extra calculators, but, you know, so, uh, please, please uh, prepare the uh, uh, simple calculator, okay? Uh, you cannot use any uh, smartphone or tablet during the exam, so you cannot use the uh, calculator app uh, in these devices. So please, please uh, prepare the simple calculator. Okay. So I think it's simple calculator. Oh, you can use the uh, uh, calculators for engineering students. It's, it's okay. Okay. But, uh, yeah, any calculator is okay. But I mean, the, you cannot use the smart devices, right? <laughs> smart device means that the, this device can connect the internet. So you cannot use the internet during the uh, exam. So don't use the simple calculator, not smart calculator. <laughs> okay, so any questions about the exam? So the big, big, big I believe, I, so as simple as every semester I said that, so I believe the difficult level of the exam will be similar to the difficult level of the homework assignment, right? So if you can uh, start the homework questions by yourself, and I believe you can uh, also start, start the uh, exam questions well, okay? So that's why I mentioned that. So you need to uh, do your homework by yourself. Oh, also, I posted the uh, solve the homework assignment. Actually, in the syllabus, so I plan to post the, the second lab assignment. But as you know, so the next week is the exam. So we have the exam on the, on the next, during the next week. So I believe it will be helpful uh, for students if you, uh, you uh, start the, the third homework. Actually, the third homework will cover the uh, what we we learn in the this semester, uh, this week, and then next week. Okay, so the third homework will actually cover the um, single cycle process architecture. So actually, it will be covered during the, this week, and then the, the, I hope I hope we can cover the uh, single cycle process of this uh, next week, the sem semester. So next next class. I mean, a few stay class, but not this class. Okay, so so actually, you know, the homework three has only few questions. There's several questions. I think uh, it has uh, it has uh, seven simple questions. I I believe. So I I, I don't think you you. You don't need to invest a long time for the form of assignment number three. Okay, uh, uh, in the previous class, we learned about the computer arithmetic. So actually, so we, I briefly covered the, the basic computation unit for the arithmetic instructions. So arithmetic instructions include the add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Divide, right? 
So in order to support the these influx uh, computer hardware, computer system also includes the computation unit. So it's a hardware, right? So this means that uh, we need to implement the, this hardware computation unit for supporting arithmetic instructions. So actually the instruction is the kind of a, a software part, so which means that uh, it does to uh, see the just instruction like the add, uh, multiply, uh, divide. So actually, as I mentioned to the software engineer, these arithmetic instructions are the same, but to the hardware engineer, the hardware engineer needs to implement the real hardware uh, computation engine. So, actually, the complexity of the these uh, units are different. Okay, so as I mentioned, the adder is the adder is, is simple, the relatively simple. But in order to implement the multiplier or divider, we require the, some more complex hardware. Okay. But I also explained that the, the computation process, the computation process of these arithmetic uh, operations are very similar to the, our normal, normal arithmetic operation. Of course, only different thing is the computer hardware just to handle and those binary numbers, not decimal numbers. Okay, so only this is the difference between the human. Uh, arithmetic operation and then and uh, computer uh, arithmetic operations. Uh, so we learned about the, the standard of the floating point number. So, so yeah, we learned how to represent floating point numbers. So actually, so in chapter two, we learned about the basic integer instruction. Okay, so this is the baseline instruction of this five ISA. But you know, so we can use the real number like, like floating point numbers. So in order to support the floating point number, actually, uh, we have the standard for this floating point number. And then also, uh, in the previous class, we learned how to represent the single precedent, it's the float in C, and then also we learned how to represent the Double precision floating point number. Oh, it doesn't work. Okay. I think I need to use my finger. Oh, right. oh it doesn't work. I'm not sure. I just cheated with my, my pen now before the class. It doesn't work now. I don't know why. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, so. My finger. No. Oh. Why, why can't I use my finger? Hmm. Okay, so I will explain. We can go. I will use the laser point. So, so in the previous class, we learned how to convert the real decimal number into the uh, floating point numbers, and so the vice vice versa. So, so, in, so we can also uh, convert the floating point to the real or decimal number. But uh, and then actually. So I explained that we need to use the exponent. So we can use the exponent from the 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 to 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, like this. So this is the smallest value of the floating point number. And then the, this value, the exponent of the, this value is the 0, 0, 0, and 1. So LSB is just 1. And then the largest value is the exponent, the exponent is the all ones and the zero. And the, this is the largest exponent of the normal floating point number. So which means that all zeros and then all ones are uh, used for the spatial floating point number. So I will 
explain is so these numbers are these numbers are called the denormal number. So denormal means that it's not normal. Okay, All right. So if the exponent part is all zero, so which means that uh, so exponent is all zero, so which is this if the exponents are all zero, then this number is used for the for representing very small number. So what does that mean? So what is the part? If you see that this equation, then you can find that this part is zero. So actually, <clears throat> for the normal floating point number, this part was one, right? The one point fraction. But if we use the all zero for the exponent, then this number becomes the zero. So which means that so we use the this if we use uh, this equation for representing very small number. Okay. So which means that uh, also in, in the floating point number we also need to represent zero. So which means that if if this number is one, then we cannot represent the zero, right? So that's why so if the all exponents are zero, then so this number is changed to the zero. So which means that all fraction parts are all zeros, and then exponent parts are all zeros also, then we can represent the zero. Okay, so this is the example. So if the fraction parts are all zero, and then the exponent parts are zero. Okay, so it's zero multiplied by two to some numbers. Okay, that is the zero. Also, so the sign b can be one or zero. But we already know that the plus zero is also zero. The minus zero is also zero. So in the in the floating point number, there are two kinds of zeros. Like one zero 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 also zero 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 zero. Okay, and then if the exponents are all ones and then fraction parts are all zeros and then this number is used for representing infinite so infinite number so if the number is very large if the, the size of size of the number uh, exceeds the, the representation of the floating point format then so we need to uh, represent the infinite so it means that all exponents are only one and the fractions are all zero, then it is the infinite number. And if the exponents are all one, it's a very large number, but fraction parts is not zero. It means the not a number. So it's called NAN. So not NAN represents the not a number. So it means that it's not a number. So it means or oh, this value or this result cannot be represented by numbers. So what is the example? If we divide some numbers using zero, so if we divide by zero, then we cannot represent the, this number. So you know, if uh, like the zero divided by zero. So if the some number like one is divided by zero, then it's the kind of infinite, but if the zero is divided by zero, then we cannot represent the result of the equation. So sometimes if you use Excel, Excel a spreadsheet, then you can find the part. And then yes, yeah, it's not a number. Okay. So actually we use the some uh, special floating point number to represent the special numbers. Okay, then. Let's see how to calculate the arithmetic of a floating point number. So this is also example of decimal floating floating point number like the this is the this is the example. Then how can we calculate the addition of this floating point number? So I also mentioned that the arithmetic operation of a human is similar to the arithmetic operation of computer so that is, is a chain uh, reversed so, uh, 
arithmetic operation by computer system is similar to the arithmetic operation by human. Okay, it's the same. So if we, this, this is the floating point addition of the decimal number, then how can we perform the addition? So firstly, so, so if, if we use this equation, then we can find that exponent parts are equal, right? Then what should we do? We need to align the decimal point, right? So this means that this part should be the same, okay? So this is 10 to 1, this is 10 to minus 1, so but we change the this number with the 10 to 1. So in this case, then we can calculate the, this fraction part, right? So then we add the, this fraction part, the so fraction of this is called the significant. So we also perform the addition for the significant part. This addition, so we can calculate the, the result. Then, you know, this is not a normal length. This, this is not normal length. So it, it does not start with the uh, some one digit. So it is the result, the significant of the result have two digits. So it should be normalized. Okay, just normalize the equal and then down and denormalize. Okay, this is the final result of the decimal number. And then it saves the floating point addition. So why do I why do I explain this? I explain this in the floating point uh, operation in you know, the system require more complex step compared to the integer part. Uh, so actually in chapter four, we will learn how to implement a processor, processor architecture. And then what this architecture only includes the integer arithmetic unit. But our normal GPUs or normal GPUs and our normal processors also include the floating point arithmetic units. So which means that <coughs> floating point arithmetic unit requires the more complex steps of its operation. So which means it will take longer time compared to the integer arithmetic instruction. Okay, so also the hardware is more complex. So I I want you uh, can understand this. Okay, so if we just consider some uh, operator of C or C plus plus, this is the same. Also, it's very fast. But you know, computer hardware, the floating point is so much lower than the integer operation because the hardware is complex. Okay, it's the same step. So we require the same step for the uh, binary floating point number. First, we need to align the binary point by adjusting the exponent part. Okay, then if the exponent part are the same, then we can calculate the add operation for the significant. And then normalize and then the uh, operation with this part. So, like the uh, decimal floating point number, the binary floating point addition also requires these four steps. Okay, so which means floating point arithmetic unit also implement the, these four steps for floating point addition. Then, so this is the hardware. The hardware also implement the, these four steps. Okay. And then how about the multiplication? So in the multiplication, so we also you know, when we learned about the integer arithmetic unit, then we learned that the multiplication is more complex than the addition, right? Because the multiplication includes the it generates the many partial products. And the multiplication hardware needs to accumulate the is many partial products. That's why the multiplier is more complex than the atom. So if you see the floating point multiplication, or as you can see, the multiplication uh, requires five steps. 
So, how can you calculate the time of 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 Okay, so first we need to add exponent. So this is the multiplication, so we need to uh, add the exponent number is uh, the power of 10. And so uh, this is the new exponent. Also, we know that we also need to uh, calculate the multiplication of the two things. Okay, you can calculate this. And then normalize and then round up or renormalize. Okay. Now, what is the required? We need to check the sign is about two upon, right? So, we need to check the sign is of the these two numbers, and then we need to determine the sign is of the final number. Okay, right. So, and then this is also same to the binary floating point number, right? The same. So first, we need to calculate the exponent part, and then multiply things come, and then normalize, and then also round up or round down, and then to determine the sign bit or the final result. So, mm, if we see the required step for floating point multiplication and then floating point addition, then you can find that also the floating point addition requires four steps. Floating point multiplication requires five steps. But this, the last step is very simple, right? We just can just check the sign bits of two operands, right? So this is that step is very simple. So we can say that the floating point operation requires usually the Four steps. So actually, floating point addition, the complexity of a floating point addition is similar to the complexity of a floating point multiplication. Okay, that's so why uh, actually the floating point arithmetic unit is much more complex than the integer unit. And that we are also fortunate that. The floating point of addition, the complexity level of the floating point addition is similar to the complexity level of the floating point multiplication. Only this part is different. So, so you know, so <clears throat> we need a multiplier for the uh, two second term. Only this part is different. But we need to uh, perform the in four steps. So, uh, so. It is, it is influenced by other implementation, but uh, actually not textbook, not this textbook. So we assume that the latency, the latency of the floating point unit is five times higher. So it's a five times slower. Okay. So latency of the floating point unit is, <clears throat> we also get the five times higher than the latency of the integer unit. Because it's more complex. Okay. So, this is what I want to say. It really takes several cycles. It's different from the integer unit. So, so this floating point algebra can be high prime. So, we will learn about the high prime architecture in the, the later part of the chapter four. But just to Understand that plot for supporting floating point, so floating point arithmetic unit uh, takes several cycles. Okay. okay. Uh, actually, in chapter two, so we learned about the so this line is by the ISA, and then I mentioned that in the ISA. The number of registers are number of registers is defined. So what is the number of registers, general purpose register? It's in, in risk five. It's 32, right? So we can use the x0 to x31, right? And for, for supporting floating point operation, 
Which five has the separated radius transport floating point theta? Okay. So which means that the risk five condenser has the radius of five for integer data. Okay. So from x zero to x thirty one. Also, if the if a uh, risk five processor supports the floating point in problem, then if the risk five processor also has the additional floating point register five. Okay, and then it's most processor has the separated floating point register five if the processor support floating point instructions. Okay, so usually, usually the integer register file is separate from the floating point register file. It's the same for the register file. And then, you know, the register file is also defined in the IDA. So, IDA, so it means that the list file IDA also has the separated floating point register file. So if risk five process of the first floating point in junction, then so at P right, so risk five at P instruction can use the at P register from F0 to F one. Okay. So and then this is also uh, changed by the supported the floating point instruction. So risk five uh support the so we print the floating point in token and the width of the, the floating point register is 64 bit. And then if the uh, uh, risk file only supports the single precision floating point numbers, then the width of the XP register is 32 bit. Okay. Also, the floating point instructions have its own load and school instruction like F S W F L D or F S W or F S D. Why? The target is different, right? If we use the just uh, normal normal load instruction, then target of the normal integer load instruction is the integer register file, right? But if we use the floating point load instruction, then target of this floating point load instruction is floating point registers. Okay, that's why. So since the floating point registers are separate from the integer register, so if the uh, file supports the floating point instruction, then this file also supports the floating point load or floating point store instruction. Okay, so these are some examples of a floating point instruction. So if we use the floating point instruction, and the instruction starts with the app, the operator and the floating point, and then also you can find the normal arithmetic instruction like this. And then also you can uh, distinguish the single precision or double precision with the post bits. And if we use the dot S, then it represents the its single precision. And then if we use that D, then that means this, this is the double precision floating point number. Okay. So this is the example. So this is the C code example. And then this C code can be translated like this. So as you can see, you can find the floating point instruction like this. Okay. Uh, and then I mentioned in chapter three, I mentioned that the floating point standard is standard uh, specified in IEEE standard 754. Okay. Actually, this standard is very complex. So, uh, computer hardware does not support the all required standards for like standard. Uh, specified by IEC uh, 754, but the basic part, so the basic parts are supported by uh, hardware. Okay. okay, so I will skip the double terrorism, then I will skip the zero. 
uh, LC. So, so I will conclude the chapter three by showing chapter three is a very short chapter. So in chapter three, we learned about the, uh, the uh, how to learn about how to implement the uh, arithmetic union. So we learned about the floating point standard. Okay. Then, okay. Let's move on to uh, chapter four. So, ah, okay. So in chapter four, we will learn how to implement the part real processor, the processor hardware. So uh, in chapter two, we learned about the instruction set architecture. And then when I uh, explain about the definition of the processor, and I mentioned that, I also mentioned the micro architecture, okay? So chapter four, in chapter four, we will learn how to design the process architecture. So then this architecture means micro architecture of process. So, so actually architecture includes a very large area of the computer system, such as the instruction, uh, um, also the system programs, and then also computer hardware. So, so which means that the architecture includes the, the large area which is related to the, the software that handles the hardware, so it includes the, the hardware, the hardware of the computer system. And then it, it is just focused on the, um, the design of a specific processor, then the, this, this design of a specific processor, actually the whole part is for the micro architecture. Okay? So we will, in fact, we will learn how to implement the this, uh, architecture of the processor. And, and then we, we will start with the single cycle Processor. Okay. So in chapter two, we learn about the basic disk file instruction, which means the, the basic uh, integer disk file instruction. So, so in chapter four, we will uh, also use the basic disk file instruction for if we if our processor supports the uh, these many instructions then the processor may be complex, okay? So we assume that our processor supports only these instructions. And so we, the, the load, we should be load word, so, okay? So for the memory instruction, we will use the load word and then store w and w. And then for the arithmetic instruction, yeah, our processor will support the add sub and or instruction. And then for the controller instruction, uh, we assume that our process of the processor is Q only. Okay. If we compare the, there is the, oh, so, okay, so actually in chapter two, these are the, the basic instruction we learned in chapter two first. In chapter four, when we when I explain about the process architecture, then we I assume that our processor supports the only these instructions. Okay, because uh, I want to simplify the, the process architecture. Okay. Okay, so this is the review of what we learned in chapter two. Okay. So what is the processor? So as I explained. The processor is a hardware, and then actually the result of instruction is are defined in instruction set architecture. So that is a processor means that if the if a, an instruction is given to a processor, then processor generates the defined define the result. So which means that processor change the data in register file and main memory, right? So 
unit of movement is bigger. Okay. So in chapter two, we learned about the arithmetic instruction, the normal, normal R type or R type instruction, and we can transfer its loop and toy instruction and control instruction, like branch or jump instruction. So based on the definition in instruction that half vector, the hardware, the hardware uh performs the the is instruction. And then how they change the result in the result file and main memory. So in chapter four, we will dive with the this part, the hardware part, which means that how can we implement the this hardware hardware for generating defined result from instruction. Okay, so we will learn how to design the inside of compensation. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, before starting uh, the some detail of, uh, of the, the process architecture, I will read you some logic design conventions. So actually. So in chapter four, as so I, I, I mean, as you know, so I plan we have the uh, several design maps, and then you will be you can give it to uh, process so you can set that variable. So it means that you need to understand how the hardware is implemented using HDL. So let's see the uh, some basic the basic knowledge of the logic design. So as I mentioned, the the Processor is not a kind of a different system, and that means that that then just has this stuff. Binary data, binary, which means that the uh, binary data has only two values, zero and one. And then zero represents the low voltage, so like the ground, okay, zero volt. And then high voltage, the uh, so one represents the high voltage, you know, electric devices. Like the BDD, okay. So, if you are interested in, in some, some of your systems, then you can find that. So, you can find the CPU voltage, so like the 1.1 .1 volt or 1.0 volt. So, then it high voltage represents the 1.0 volt, which is the BDD. And then there are two kinds of uh, Elements like a combinational element and then sequential element. Okay, so we will learn about the uh, these elements. So, what is the combina combinational element? So, this is an example of a combinational element. Combinational element means that if the input signals are given to this logic or this element, then output result is. Generated, right? But when these elements have some delays, okay, latency. So it means if A and B signals are equal to this element, then after some time, after some delay, the result is generated. And then this result is determined by only this value. Okay, that is the definition of a combinational element. Suppose you put it at the end gate, so end gate generates the, the performs the end operation. So we can say so a equal one and b equal one, then y equal becomes the one. But at some time, a changes to the zero. So if that A is changed from one to zero. Then the so Y becomes the zero in this case, but after some delay. Okay, that is the definition of uh, combination element. So it means that the output is just determined by input value. Okay, but in real hardware, it's in it also considered a delay. So output is just determined by input value. So 
sequential logic, the output of the sequential logic is determined by input and state. Okay, so this is the example of sequential element in flip flop. Okay, so what can you see? So you can find, you can observe that the people people flop has output, output is Q, and then input is D, and then another input is block. And then what is the operation of all this people block? So this is the clock signal. So clock signal is the periodic signal. And then actually the operation of this people clock is that at the rising edge of this clock, then people clock check the input D. Okay, so at this time, at this time, the people block check the, the value of D, and then the Q is becomes the value of D. Okay, so D is delivered to Q, but you can find some delay here because this is the hardware. Okay, this is not a uh, uh, bank, bank has the element, so that hardware has uh, delay. So so you can find that at this time, the clock actually, at, uh, at this clock actually, then the D is checked separately to the section, and then Q becomes the A to the D. Now what is this one? If this uh, combination allows it, then the D is changes, and Q is also changes. But this is D plus, I think the logic, okay? So what it means that, the state, the state of the sequential logic is changed by the clock signal. Okay. So you can find that uh, at this time the D is changing, but uh, it's not changed. So actually, even though the D is changing, this change is not reflect, reflected to the output of the true because people block only check the input value of D, the rising value of the block signal. Okay, so which means that the state, the state of the input block is changed by block, block signal. And so the which means that the output, the output is also influenced by this state, this state. Okay. So if you study this example, we only check the, the, the value of D at the rising area of the block signal, so it's this point and this point and this point. And then the Q is updated by the value of D at the rising edge. So which means that even though the, D, the value of D is changed at this point, so this change is updated at this point. Okay, this is it is detected at this point and then it's updated at this time. Okay, that is the deep flip flop. So, why actually this deep flip flop is very important because this is the design, uh, this the, uh, component actually work with the last signal. Right. In chapter one, we also mentioned the clock. Theory, right? So, which means actually the processor, our, our computer processor also use clock signals and then also, you know, the period of clock PC is critical for the performance of the computer system. Okay. Also, we can also use the different kind of the flip flop, like the flip flop with enable signal. So in this example you can find the this right enable signal. So this is so this deeply plug is is a different from the so this deeply plug so this deeply plug has only two input signals D and clock but you can see that this deeply plug has the D signal and right the right enable and then clock signal. So it's the same but so also the at the rising edge of the clock, the D is checked, but this is the right enable. 
So this degree plan also check the value of this right signal, the right behavior. So the right behavior signal is one, so the value is one, and then Q becomes the D. But at this point, so this is also another, the next writing idea of clock signal. So you can find that for right behavior is zero. So in this time, the D is not obtained. Okay. So actually, you you, we, I also explain about the, the basic component of the processor, then we can find the some component as the enable signal. Okay, so which means that even though the input is changes and then so this component, uh, uh, this component work with clock signal for the updates. Updates of the output is also controlled by this enable signal. Okay. And then this slide shows how to implement the basic digital design. So actually, so I, I mentioned that the digital design uh, work electric digital component work with clock signal. So we can uh Actually, implement the uh, entire component like this. So you can find the uh, uh, state element one and state element two. And then actually, this state element represents the deep part. So we learned in the previous slide. So, so this state element is also another deep part. So and then what can we see? So we can observe combinational log between two. Deep response. And then, you know, so the clock signal, same clock signal, same clock signals are given to uh, the deep reflux and then another deep reflux. Then you can find the combination of the here. So, this is the clock signal. So, what does that mean? So, input. Input signals to this combinational logic are synchronized. Synchronized means that for the, in the, in the timing, the timing is the same. Okay. Why? You know, the output of this deeply block, outputs of this deeply block are updated as so, a Rising edge of clock signal. So, which means, so you know, the output of this deep flip clock is given to the input of combinational logic here. So, which means that at the rising edge of the clock, input signals are updated at the same time. Okay? Then, this combinational logic will generate the Output based on the this, this input signal. Okay, so you know input signals are synchronized at the rising edge of the clock. So which means that at the rising edge of the clock, input signals are given to combination of logic. Okay, you know this this combination logic is also hardware, and then I also explain that hardware as delay. So at the some time, the output will be generated. Then as you can see, so this output of combination logic will become the input of next degree plan. What does that mean? So based on the input signal, the delay, delays can be changed, the delays are, delays can be changed by input values, right? The delays are this one. So, which means that the output of this combination, combination of logic can be generated, which means stabilized at this point, this point, this point, or this point. But even though the output is stabilized at this point, the output is updated to this deep 
and the writing and the book is crowded. Okay, even though the output is generated at this point, at the same time, the output is updated to this digital time, which means output is output can be generated at any any time during this clock period. Okay, so if if outputs are generated within this clock period, then this digital clock can sample the output and remain another. And this means that after this digital clock, the some signals are also synchronized. Okay. So actually so another combination of logics are uh, connected to this uh, table stuff. And then we increment the digital design like this. So digital design is actually uh, uh, composed of table block and then combination of this. And then the operation of combination of logics are synchronized by deep block. Okay. You can implement the logic and see the the output of a combination of logic can be also connected to the input This is the feedback. Okay, but just remember the this model. So between two different blocks, we have combination of logic, and then it's the output of this So which means that using the this different block, the input Similar to combinational logic are synchronized at the rising end of the clock. And after some delay, output is generated. And then, if the, this output is generated within clock period, right, then the output can be also sampled by this different clock. Then what is happened? If the output is generated at this point, so it, 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 it means that the, the delay of this combinational logic is very, very high, then output can be generated at this point. Then what is happened? This is the wrong design, which means the incorrect design. So we cannot use this with the logic. This is the system because we don't know the, the exact value of the uh, output of combination logic if the output is not stabilized. It can be one, it can be zero, but we don't know. If we, we cannot know the exact value of the result, so this is the incorrect design. So which means the clock period should, should be longer than the delay of this combination of logic. Okay? Do you understand? So which means if the clock period is uh, shorter than the delay of this combination of logic, then this system will generate incorrect output. Okay, this is the uh, uh, my my teacher said that oh, this is thin, right? Because the digital system generates the input value, and he said uh, it is a thin, it is a thin. Okay, but we should we should avoid this thing. Okay, so which means that the clock period of the clock signal will be longer than the delay of the combination of logic. So what does that mean? I said the computer system, the clock here is also uh, influences the performance of a computer system, right? Because it can high, and then it can stop the by, it can by, it can by, it can by, So, which means, actually, I also mentioned that the clock here is determined by delay of. Combinational logic. 
So vitamin is the relay of this combination of logic in sure, and we can use test clock. If we can use test clock, then we can improve the performance of the system. But if the delay of this combination of logic is long, then we cannot use test clock, then the performance will be low. Okay, I hope you can understand the, uh, this uh, uh, the relation between the delay of combination and logic and relax period. Okay, because this is very important for understanding time slide down. Okay, okay. so it's very, very okay. So if we see the uh, some example HTML code of the deep flip flop, then we can find the, so we can implement the deep flip flop with system very low like this. So as you can see, you know, we have flux signal, flux input, and then the D, D input, and then we can find the Q. And then the, we can the same, so this is the Q, so the logic is declared for the Q. So this is the always statement, and then on the bar, you can find the on the bar F and so actually the F F represents the flip flop. Flip flop. Sorry. I can I can use a pen. Sorry about that. The flip flop. And then this is the sensitivity list. Sensitivity list means that uh, if we use the always statement in the system very low, very low, then we need to define the sensitivity list. So, which means sensitivity, so actually, this always statement is checked when this event is true. Okay? So, when the system value is executed of this code, this, and the system value checks the, the, the operation of this always statement by checking the sensitivity loop. Okay, so we can find that inside of the sensitivity loop, we can find the pass edge. So pass edge is the Positive energy of the clock signal, which is the rising energy of the clock signal. So, which means that, you know, the clock signal in operates like this, and then actually the system very low check the operation of this already statement only when the clock is at the rising energy, because this is the hot energy of a clock. So this is the sensitivity loop. So this statement uh, means that the positive edge of the lock signal. So I will check the this already statement. Oh, then Q equals to D. Okay, D is So you know this operation operator is different from the so this equal from the but just remember that this is the non-blocking non-blocking operator, and then the inside of the sequential logic, then we need to use the this non-blocking operator. Okay. Okay. Just if you see this uh, statement, Q becomes D. Okay. So. How near has the time concept? So at the rising edge of the clock with always the statement is accepted, and then how the Q becomes Q. So the definition of this people clock is the same to the so the statement implement the definition of people clock. So I explained that the people clock at the rising edge of the clock. The Q is becomes the same to the D. Okay, it's the same. So in the system variable, we can find that 
Oh, at the right edge of the graph, so it always take one reading and skip in how Q becomes in. Okay. Let's see the another example. It's the people in love with clock and negative reason. So, what is the reason? So, reset also changed the output of it to be this deep signal. So this this when the reset signal is associated to the this deep signal, then the output is determined by defined reset. So reset change. So you can find the two uh two control signals like clock and reset under the V under the V represents the Negative, so which means that if the reset value becomes zero, then which is the reset state. Okay, so this which represents the negative reset. So you can find the input D and then output Q. So I also mentioned that this this infinite plus the output of this infinite plus is I I mentioned the reset speed. So the speed. So speed is changed by clock signal and reset. Okay. When this always statement is executed at the positive edge of clock or negative edge of reset. Speed is the negative reset. Okay. So which means that if the reset becomes Zero, then this already statement is also executed. How we check the uh, this deeply plus at the reset value? Okay, so this if statement, and then you can find the now. So if this is true, so which means the reset is a zero, then output becomes all zeros. So which means that this deeply plus is changed to the reset. Okay. Then also we can find that other case. Otherwise, so this means it's not reset. So at the rising edge of the clock, the Q becomes D. So this is the example of a deep clock and with negative reset. Okay. And another example is the deep clock with Enable. Okay, so this, so you know, the uh, this is the this is exactly the same to the, this uh, live. So which means that uh, the output of Q is determined by this enable signal. For this enable signal is also checked at the rising area of the curve. Okay. So which means you can find that the enable signal is changed during the clock insert or within the clock period, but this change is not updated, right? Because this this different now also check the this control signal in the enable the rising area of the clock. So how can how can we implement the enable in the uh, deeply plot. So, also you can find the enable signal is edited. Uh, it's a so we also that this is the this deeply plot has also negative reset. So, which means the positive plot, then negative is the whole reset and the bar is. So, this is the same. So, if the reset is uh, associated, then we change it to the uh, reset state. Okay, so two becomes the whole zero. So you can find it otherwise, so which means that it's a normal state <coughs> at, the, <coughs> at the rising edge of the clock, the hard edge of the clock, you can find it enable equal one and q equal d. Okay, so which means that at the rising edge of the clock, this people is not check the enable value, and if the enable is one. And Q is updated. So you cannot, you can find that 
How about the enable code zero? It is not defined here, but by definition, you cannot find any else statement here. I mean, so if enable is zero, nothing is defined, which means that Q is same to the current value, right? Because Q is not updated. Okay, understand? <clears throat> So this is the example of little plug with enable. So actually the system very low, one very low defines the behaviors of hardware animal. Okay. And so this uh, system very low model is called the behavior model, the behavioral model. Uh, and actually the system very low defines the Behaviors of hardware element like right here. Okay, so, <clears throat> so if you understand the uh, system very low, uh, uh, very low uh, syntactic, then the, the meaning of the uh, syntactic of uh, HDL, and you can uh, easily understand the real operation of hardware. So sometimes it, it is, it can be tricky because. Many write the software code, we do not consider about the time. Okay? We just think that in token or statements are expected from top to bottom, right? That's how we can understand the software. But this is the hardware language. So, and actually, hardware works in the real world. Okay, the software works in the fantasy world. Because it doesn't even like consider time, but in the real world, we need to consider time. So, actually, the audio description language is the time part, and then based on the time, the behavior is determined. So, I believe you can easily understand the behavior of combination analogy. The behavior of combination analogy is very similar to the Software, right? So if we need to change it, the output is changed, but after some delay, okay, this is the hardware. But the behavior of the sequential logic is the somewhat different, the very tricky for the time because the, the output is determined by state. And then if we just consider the state, then we need to also consider the time. Time of the is hard. Okay. So this is the example of latch. So this actually we in the this system we use latch for the some special cases. Okay. So which means that if we, the, if we use latch, that is the that is kind of a bug. Okay. So that's why I like the bar here. So, 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 people, so if you look at this code, then you can find the, oh, this is the array statement. So, you can find the sum of the years. So, this means the in means combination analogy and sequential. But if you look at this, but as you can see, this code is very similar to the enabling people. Right? So, if you enable it one, then two could be. So, what is the problem? This code will generate latch, not deeply plan like this, because this code does not work with the plug signal. Okay. So actually the behavior of this latch is different from the, the behavior of this plug. So it means that so Actually, this logic takes the level, the value of enable, and why the enable is one. So, like, so this is the signal. So, signal is uh, waiting for some time for the, this one. And then, why the enable is one? And if the D is changed, then this change is updated to Q immediately, right? 
what is what is different? So when I mention what is drop, so it could be the cap at the widening edge of the club. Okay, so you need to consider the club signal. But in this example, we just check the enable signal. So why the enable is one, and then the B is changing. This change is immediately updated to Q. But in the digital system, we do not use the convention like this. So which means that we do not use match. That's why if the if you generate the match, that is a ball. You know, or did that in that? Okay. Okay, why do I why did I explain like this? Because in chapter four, you need to understand how audio works, how real processor works. So which means that we need to consider the timing, timing of the signals and the timing of the instructions or timing of the result in the processor. Okay, it's it's different from the software flow. So I mentioned software does not consider about the time because it is but in the real hardware execute of instruction, which is software, then we need to also we need to consider the timing of the instruction and timing of the results or timing of the class, you know, process of design. That's why I explain about the this convention of the design, and then uh, it's why I explain about the timing of the digital plan and then uh, uh, sequential logic. Okay, I hope you everyone can understand about uh, this uh, digital design convention. Okay, because this is a hardware, hardware part, not software. Okay, so uh, and then if we use, uh, if not take the uh, from if the logic design code, then you can start by yourself. Also, if you have any question, then you can uh, visit my office. You can stop by my, my office or you can stop by the PA's office anytime. Not by, by appointment, okay? Okay, so I will stop here. Um, any questions? Okay. Well, thank you for your attention. Thank you. 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 Thank you.